I'm John Hartman from Durango Silver Company and in this video I'm going to show you how to put a ring shank on a ring table that we have made in the previous blitz. Um, so in getting ready for this um, I showed you how I sanded uh, on the, the ring shank right here so the edges are flat and you use your flat steel or whatever you do to double check and look very well to make sure all your rings touch the touch the table and maybe you might be able to see that better on here you can see that I have a couple I have a couple of the uh, the ones on the left are not quite touching so what I'll do is I'll just bend those down a little bit with my pliers to make sure that they touch everything touches just right okay all right everything is touching fine now now we're going to go back here and um, we're going to use this Rio Grande's no flow and we're just going to protect our work here and I'm going to take this off here and I'm going to, uh, this is a little wet here, I'm going to, hey, incidentally, if you need holes anywhere in your pants, just spill some of this flux on your pants or some of this Ferrex uh, uh, jewelry cleaner. That'll fix your pants up real good. Uh, so I'm going to put uh, no flow anywhere that I don't want silver to flow on the table while we're soldering the shank on, just for safety's sake. I, I, I'm, I used a uh, a uh, a um, higher temp solder for the bezel, and and uh, but I used the the uh, 65 on the uh, soldering the bezel and the twisted wire to the table. So uh, there could be some solder movement if you're if you overheat this thing. So and and especially learning for the first time or first few times, I would just do this just paint this thing okay and um, also if you stamped uh, a maker's mark or a quality stamp such as uh, sterling or 925 also put the no flow in there so now now we're just going to heat this up and set this this no flow on here and I see I missed a little one little area here okay but see how it just turns white there it's set once it turns white so okay so I, I'm a, I actually I'm good it's 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 around there good but just double check things just just uh, to make sure everything's fine and um, Okay, so now we're going to cool this down. Okay, and I have got 220 wet dry sandpaper that you can get at any hardware store. Um, it's gray colored, it's for sanding metal or anything. Uh, it's not wood sandpaper, it's for metal. And, uh, and then now I'm just going to clean the bottom of this table up. Okay, so now we've got a clean sanded table, the bottom of the table, and see the Rio no flow is in there. All right, so now I'm going to put ring, flux on the bottom of my ring shank here. Okay, and I'm going to use sheet solder, and I'm going to cut little pieces of sheet solder here. Okay, and I'm going to put a little piece of solder on each prong. Now, 
when you get good you don't have to do all the this is extra work and you'll 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 eliminate some some of the steps I showed you because you're you're a, a professional after you practice so I usually solder these shanks on with wire solder but that's okay um, I'm just teaching you how to get do this and make it easy on you okay so in my case I put this uh, I cut the sheet square and I stamp this right in the middle so I know I'm going straight with with my ring shank and but this is a continuous problem with everybody is getting your ring shank so your uh, a ring top is is straight when it somebody puts it on their finger okay so you always have to be uh, mindful of that um, okay so look from look from all angles And get this thing so it, it is straight and and right now is a crit critical time to uh, really look at look at what you're doing watch what you're doing here okay because you really don't want to solder this and then have to take it back off to straighten it up if you don't have to and when you get really good at soldering you can use things like a GRS here. If you need to take the shank off, you can pin your, your table down there, heat it back up and just take the ring shank off with your tweezers. There are ways to do this, but when you're first getting started out on this, I'm just pre-warning you. You know, double check your ring shank and make sure it's on straight and where you want it before you uh, start your torch and solder these prongs down. Okay, that's where I want it. Okay, so we're going to heat this up, go round and round slowly, and heat this up slowly so so no solder pops out of there or anything. Uh, you'll see that the the flux is bubbling up, and and it'll actually uh, sometimes if you get a lot of flux on there, the shank will lift up a little in the air. But you'll find techniques like heating the shank up here and, and then down here, it won't rise and lower. Okay, get your tweezers ready in case you got to move anything. Have your tweezers in one hand. Go around here, heat this thing up slowly, and know that there is more mass in the, in the uh, ring top than there is on the shank, usually. So go around this thing and, uh, and, and, uh, Make sure your ring top is uh, sorry is uh, is getting hot. Okay, so that we're getting hot here now, and the solder is going to melt here. There it goes. One, two. Okay, the ring shank is soldered down. I see at this point I want to bring this over just a little bit here. There we go, and she's done. Okay. So you can see the solder flowed under each one of these. Um, it worked great. Um, this is how I'd like to start you. If you want to move on to uh, wire solder, and if anybody wants me to go into more detail about soldering if they have troubles, uh, let me know. Because that is one of the hard things to do in silver or goldsmithing. And gold is completely different soldering than silver. So uh, we're just talking about silver right now. Um, but uh, uh, soldering is one of the one of the things that people have a little bit of trouble with but one thing for sure is before you solder if you make sure all your parts are fitted very well and it's everything sanded and clean uh, you're 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 doing a good thing there um, uh, usually if it, it, problems that you'll have would be you got dirt, you didn't pickle it properly, you didn't sand it, you, what, what have you, it's dirty, uh, grease got, oil got on it from somebody, your skin or the piece of bacon you was eating, and uh, uh, it, 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 the, the uh, solder won't flow because it's dirty. So uh, just make sure everything is clean, 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 clean. Okay, so now I'm going to pickle this, um, and then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna, uh, we're going to go to the buffing machine, actually, and uh, and uh, 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 triple this this ring, and then set the stone and 
polish it. Okay, so I just finished pickling this uh, um, for about, uh, I left it in there for about 10 minutes. It turned white. It's all clean all the way around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to oxidize it. And there's a couple things that I like doing. One is you can, you can keep a liver of sulfur uh, pot. Uh, you can use liver sulfur and water and you get a lot of darkener and it's beautiful. Or my favorite is also Winox. And you can get Winox, I believe, at Thunderbird Supply. Rio Grande doesn't sell it. Uh, we always used to get it from Indian Jeweler Supply, but uh, I think Thunderbird sells it now, but it instantly turns it black. And it gets down in there and it's really good. Now, uh, one thing, we just made a simple ring here just to show you how to make a ring. But we also could take right now and we could put like raindrops on the, on the shank using a pair of some sort of a, a vice type tweezer. And um, I'm going to give you a cool little tip here. And oh, I'm going to try to give you a cool little tip here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I buy casting grain from any of the jeweler supplies. And then I use a, a mill grain tool. It's a tool that separates uh, raindrop sizes. I think they're 30 bucks, but boy, they sure work nice. So I got all different size raindrops here that I, that I got just by buying casting grain and running them through a uh, mill. And so uh, uh, I can pick all the same size raindrops, put them on here with flux, and then come back and solder them. You can also put a piece of solder right there and then put your raindrops right over them. You can also put your solder, flux, raindrops, walk away, let your, so let your uh, flux dry, come back in maybe 15, go have a cup of coffee in 15 minutes, and they'll solder on like great, just great. Uh, if you do not, if you solder them when the flux is wet, they might come uh, swell up and go back down, and you'll have to use your tweezers to keep them where you want them. So, uh, just food for thought. Okay, so I'm just uh, going through here and darkening this. I'm going to put some oxidation in my maker's mark down here. And uh, I need some more oxidation. Another bottle of Winox. So I use Winox and I use liver sulfur, but I find myself using Winox a lot more because it's so handy. Okay, so and then I'm wash it off a little bit. It kind of stinks. Okay, I personally always like to have air at my bench because I can blow things off and dry them real quick. And uh, so here we are, now we're oxidized. Okay, uh, I'm good right now with this is all I need to do. Um, to get be prepared to to uh, buff but some people like to take a file and they like to just break this edge here because this is a sharp edge but it's really not necessary Okay, we're back to my buffing machine. Again, uh, you can get a, a small buffing machine to start. Rio Grande sells a great, several great ones. Um, uh, and uh, wear gloves. Get yourself some nice uh, buckskin or uh, doe skin gloves. Uh, you tend to go through gloves buffing. Um, and that's just the way it is. And if you get thick gloves, you don't like that. If you get too thin of gloves, they, you buff holes in them. So your choice just start with whatever you can Tr start with thin thin leather gloves okay so i have a steel wool wheel here and i go through i go through here with my steel wool and uh, i'm going to show you something another thing here that i have that that uh, you should be aware of okay so i cleaned out the inside of the shank but there might be some burrs inside this shank that, that you just can't see. And so we're going to go down here to my drill press. 
and I have this handy dandy little tool here I put in the drill press and it looks like this and Rio Grande sells these and, and uh, it's an inside ring sander so I just turn this on like this and I go in here and I sand the inside of the ring and I go turn it around go the other direction and that's it and so we've sanded the inside of the ring real nice and if you use like a casted shank if you do any casting then it's really important here but for for handmade sheet shanks and, and uh, half round wire shanks uh, you probably don't need it but uh, just a tip so to go back to the uh, steel wall on the buffing mandrel and uh, buff that okay so now I like these uh, I like these yellow buffing wheels uh, and I use a I use a six inch the wide one most of the time a lot of people like these razor wheels and they're you know they're uh, you know they come six inch too and, and you buy them, buy them both in six inch because they last way longer and you don't pay that much more so I'm gonna I'm this this is uh, this is uh, white diamond I like using white diamond uh, it's or you can use bobbing compound but I like a fairly non greasy buffing compound and First thing I do is I go, I buff it. This is an inside ring buff, and I and I polish inside the ring, round and around and around and around, and and so that's that's polished. Even so, it seems a little greasy. It is. It did get polished. Okay, and put my big wheel on here, and some white diamond here, and uh, another tip. This tool uh, trues your buffing wheel up, and uh, uh, it's missing its screws, I see, so I'm going to use it this way today. But uh, it, uh, the buffing wheel sometimes fills full of, of compound, and that'll just true it right back up. Okay, so I'm going to go around inside, the, all the way around inside the ring shank. And the buff it into the ring, bottom of the table. And then we'll go around the other way. And this will take the inside edge off the ring shank, so it's real comfortable when someone wears it. Okay. Then I'm going to go around, the, around quickly. Just go around the table. Then I'm going to quickly go around the bezel. Now I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to go the opposite direction. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to buff in all directions. And you'll get buffing real quick and easy. Now I'm buffing the outside edges of the ring shank all the way around. Okay, on both sides. Okay. So now I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to buff across the uh, across the prongs, and then I'm going to buff on the bottom of the ring shank, across the prongs, go the other direction. Okay, now you might get fire still depending upon how hot, hot you heated your metal up, and that's a deep gray color, like right there. And you need to get that out. And how you get that out is by working back and forth. In many directions, softly buffing. Just keep buffing until you get that fire scale off. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another trick that I love. I like using these brush wheels. And these brush wheels are great. This is a B20 superior quality uh, Cocker and Weber. Uh, B29 um, these are great because they don't slurry your silver they don't over buff your silver when you're buffing and they get in the best 
they're just so nice to use you could get everywhere everywhere you want to be it won't uh, slur or over buff the twisted wire it's they're great for bezels they're just great wheels okay so now that here you buff the thing take a good look here and see if you've missed anywhere okay I mi I missed right in here I see a line next to that prong I think I see a little bit of I do I see some fire scale right there on the bottom of the shank this side is pretty darn good so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna get that line out I'm gonna get my head in here now get that line and get this fire skill off here this is a really important part of when you're finishing your ring you can get all the little scratches or nicks or whatever out of it with these buffing wheels and uh, take all the rough edges off your piece of jewelry now make sure you get some a couple of these brushes and I even like the mini brushes for uh, you know uh, critical areas like if you put two stones on a ring top to get in between the two stones uh, the little tiny brush brushes work okay so we're ready now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna clean this with joy soap and a brush you can use a toothbrush or a jeweler's brush, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna scrub this down really good with hot water and joy soap. After you, after you triple E or do the the pre polish um, on your buffing machine, the cut down cycle, that is uh, that will pollute your final finish, your rouge, jeweler's rouge. So make sure that you clean your jewelry very well. I, I generally, I clean mine in joy with a toothbrush or scrub brush and I scrub it really good. I, I'll put the jewelry in hot, hot water for uh, a couple minutes with a little bit of joy in there. And then I'll, then I'll put joy on the piece of jewelry and scrub it with the brush. And then I'll dip it in and I'll scrub it again. And then I throw mine in the ultrasonic cleaner and finish cleaning it. But that's not, that's, that's kind of overkill. So I, 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 uh, clean the ring and it's kind of now kind of a dull finish and now I'm going to set my stone and I generally use these two tools this is my burnisher and it has a slight curve here that's the kind I like I don't like the straight ones they're they're uh, some people use them but not me you always need a bench knife around and you need to always keep it sharp and so uh, if you need to use it for one thing or another you've got it Okay, so now I'm going to take my ring. I'm going to look at the stone and I'm going to see where the stone, which way the stone goes and how, how it fits. And the stone's going to fit wonderful. So we did a good job in, in uh, putting the bezel around. I'm going to take my burnisher and I'm going to round this bezel out away. And I'm going to put, fit my stone again. Look at that, fit right in. Okay, now is that the direction I want it to go? Let's see. No, I want it to go that direction. I, see, I pushed it out, out a little farther there, but that's fine. Okay, so now, using my bench, bench knife, I use it. back handles wood. Okay, so now, this is what I use. I use jeweler's sawdust to level and raise the stone okay and you just push this put this stuff in you, you measure your stone how high you want it and how much sawdust you want and I kind of did that already when I showed you fitting the stone okay and my stone fits in again let's see is it like this okay now the question is, how high do I want my stone? Okay. Dump your, you know, wiggle this back and forth, and put your sawdust back in your, in your cup or what have you, and then and then refit it. Ah, beautiful. That's how I like it, just like that. Okay. So now I'm going to hold down the stone. 
I'm going to blow any excess sawdust away. I'm going to make sure my stone is totally level in the ring. If not, you can tap on a side or tap wherever you want and the sawdust will move over and just work, work, work on it until you get it right. So now I'm going to hold my stone down and I'm going to, and I'm going to put the ring in my finger like this and I'm going to gently start burnishing. Okay, round. And I put, a, I put a fair amount of pressure, but I'm not trying to get the bezel all the way up against the stone the first time around. I'm going to go around this maybe two, three times, okay, and putting more and more pressure on. And again, your stone is supposed to have be smaller towards the top of the bezel than down in the bezel. So when you burnish this up to this stone, it's going to lock the stone in there, okay? So... Make sure there's no gap, and if you're wearing a visor, you can easily see there when you do no longer have any gap, okay? So, now, the ring is ready to polish, okay? Now, um, I'll tell you right now that I'm only going to polish this ring, and then I'm going to scrub it again, clean it, and then I'm going to wipe it off with the rouge cloth. And then, and then I'm going to put this ring for sale. And when we sell this ring, I'm going to put th this thin star bond. I use star bond, and I like, I really like paleo bond, uh, super glue, and it has a fine little needle here. And I'll take right before I this ring leaves my facility. I'm going to put super glue around the bezel. So if somebody wears this in water or whatever. Uh, it won't the stone won't start rocking for any reason it won't get loose but before you do that make sure if you need to size this ring make sure it fits the person and, and the last thing you do is just put a little bit of super glue all the way around there let it dry wipe it off one more time with your rouge cloth and it's ready to go to your customer okay so now I got a different pair of gloves for, for rouging and um, I use ZAM, Z-A-M. It's green in color. That's what the industry standard is. It, it'll give you one heck of a polish. It's beautiful stuff. Okay, so I'm going to use my little wheel. Get my, soften my wheel a little bit. Put a little bit of rouge on here. Get, do not ever get this. Your Bob, your, your, uh, your buffing compound on your polishing compound wheels, polishing wheels. So I'm going to put just a wee little bit on the inside ring buff. Come in here, round and round and round and back and forth. Turn it around, round and round and round. Okay. And then now we're going to come over here and I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to buff my ring all the way around. Go around the other side. This is a lot easier and it doesn't take much time at all, but you want to get a good polish on it. All angles, all directions. Okay. You'll find your own method here. Okay, I'm going to get the bottom of the table all the way around. I'm going to get the belt up. Uh, now, don't, don't get too close to your stone with your buffing wheel. Try to stay away from the stone as much as possible. If you hit the stone a little, hit it softly. But even Zam will even polish your stone even better than the lapidary wheels will and, and, and the, uh, the um, Finishing on the finishing wheel on the your lapidary machine. The, so you get a not really nice glow on your stone with stone with the Zam. Okay, so see the ring? It's all polished inside and out. I see the inside here. I can polish it just a little. It's probably from me touching it. And so I'll just go here and. Polish it up. Yep, okay, it's shiny, shiny. Okay, we've got this completely buffed, rouged, 
And now we're going to go clean it again uh, with uh, Joy soap and hot water and then uh, dry it and then use a, a, a rouge cloth on, on it. And uh, there's two parts of the rouge cloth. The rouge cloth and then the other side of the rouge cloth, generally speaking, is just a clean cloth or a reasonably clean cloth. And, uh, and it, buffs, it, it, it takes off the residue of the rouge side of the cloth. So use both sides. Okay, so we've just finished the ring. I scrubbed it and it is polished and look at this dandy little ring here. Wasn't that easy to do? Yes, it was very easy to do. And um, I hope you enjoyed yourself and I thank you for watching our video. And if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we will be making a bunch more for you. I enjoyed it. I hope you did. Thank you.